Yes, I did mean to record that. Okay. Um, so that's my goal. This is what I'm trying to accomplish here. Am I <laughs> now I need to check. Am I I'm sharing this again properly? Okay, thank you. Uh, this is, you know, the stupid classic question. Am I sharing this? Can you hear me? Can you see my screen? Get my participants back. So enter VR for me. This is something that I had already been doing outside of a teaching context is playing in virtual reality. Um, I'm so I'm now on my third headset and having a great deal of fun with it. Um, I already knew, I actually got into it from a business context when I was um, doing consulting work for lean and process improvement, recognized that there's a lot of um, industry training and learning and process development and so on that are being done in virtual reality and VR. So I got this, I got into it sort of with a professional view and then moving into teaching, playing games with it, but then having this problem to solve, I thought, well, can I adopt this technology somehow? Is there some way of, of kind of incorporating some of the amazing opportunities that there are in VR to, to a class context? Um, the other thing we, so I know, Jessalyn, there was a panel this morning, the, the faculty panel talking about digital simulations and, and many ways of describing them, but one is to call them digital twins. So they're, they're digital recreations of some actual physical space or some physical thing. So it goes beyond just 3D modeling of a product. This is, you're creating an environment that seems real or is a kind of a semi-reproduction of a real environment and then people can interact with it virtually right, in this sort of digital realm and very very becoming very very common for training and and also becoming very common for collaboration for remote office workers and and for remote training and conferences and seminars and so on um, for those of you who haven't sort of been exposed to that concept, here's one of the best ones that I've seen. This was actually sponsored by, uh, or promoter, I guess, and partially paid for with government funding. Um, this is a, a virtual tour. Well, it's not even a virtual tour. It's a recreation of the International Space Station that you can go to and float around in. So this is, I'm recording this from my headset. Nice little Star Wars or Star Trek intro. Please select training, mission, or explorer mode. Because who needs training? <laughs> Dive in. So you are in this virtual space and you're physically interacting with things and you're floating around and you can, so you can, there's no gravity. You could grab onto bars and pull yourself forward. You can spin yourself. You can find yourself very quickly upside down or backwards and so it can be very disorienting. Um, there's objects in the space that you can interact with shove around and so on so you can look around it's, but it gives you an, a real sense of being there um, you know understanding a little bit about what it's like or getting kind of a feel for it and the one thing I like with this simulation is they've created a bunch of objects where if you click on them so this turns out to be an exercise bicycle and when you click on it they pop up these little videos recorded by astronauts that explain why there's a exercise bicycle on the on the space station and how they use it and that sort of thing and it's just this little dialogue and then when you're done you click it and you move on and you can explore other stuff okay so it's a very compelling <laughs> very interesting kind of an opportunity to learn about space station okay Better than Zoom, right? But it's kind of an extreme. 
like I'm not trying to get us into the space station, but you're but starting to recognize that stuff like this exists, right? Like this is here. This is people program this, and there's tons of people that are floating around in space as we speak in inside of a virtual headspace. Okay, so some of the things that I discovered in VR. First off, the sense of presence is rather remarkable. You you go on a roller coaster ride and sometimes you have to close your eyes. Like you're sitting in your chair and, and you will tip over because your brain sort of convinces you that you are in this space or doing this thing. Floating upside down and twirling in the space shuttle in the in ISS is not something you wanna do while you're standing up. Like it's a weird, weird sensation. Your brain is quite willing to take on this audio and visual information and fool itself into thinking that you're actually there. So you can do so many crazy things. And meeting people in virtual spaces like this is very engaging. You, you like you feel you're actually meeting them. And, and I would challenge you, you know, Nimish, do you think you've met Sandra? You know, we're here together, but we really haven't met, right? Like we're talking, at least I'm talking, you're listening, but there's no kind of cross contamination. We're not in the same space and sharing like subtle things, like even just looking over and looking at the person next to you and rolling your eyes going, oh my God, you know, he's still talking. <laughs> we, we can't, we don't have that kind of social interaction in this sort of space. And I will say there's a lot of organizations that are clearly putting a lot of time and effort into this and, and recognizing the power of virtual reality. Uh, so you can attend all kinds of seminars that are in an appropriate place. I attended a seminar that was held uh, in a scene that's under the ocean. So we look up at the fish floating above us. Um, I actually have a, uh, a friend who worked briefly for a company that made a digital twin for uh, the Bruce nuclear power plants. And so people would be trained in safety protocols before going to the physical nuclear power plant, but, but they wouldn't learn it by reading a book. They would be given instruction and, and sort of trials and simulations inside a virtual nuclear, nuclear power plant. And this is a local company. Um, and I, when I looked it up, I found there's a similar funded project by DARPA in the States. Um, Walmart, for example, has done training with customer service people on how to deal with difficult customers, but they're virtual customers and you're dealing with them in a virtual space, but they may throw things at you. They may pull out a gun, but no one gets hurt, right? But it's viscerally real to you as you participate in this. Um, collaborating on product design so you can get together. I don't know if, if you've seen, um, uh, oh my gosh, Mark Zuckerberg, right? And his metaverse, his new metaverse. People are already doing this. Like he's late to the table in, in imagining that there is this metaverse. The metaverse already exists. Like that's the funny part. It's, it's, just, it's existed for a decade now. So thanks, Mark, <laughs> for, for joining on. Now, his company makes the headsets that more than half of the people in the metaverse or in virtual reality use, which I appreciate, but okay. His vision is a little bit late. Um, okay, so on and on and on. Also in education, it turns out that there's quite a lot, and it took me to be in VR to discover how much is going on in VR. Like I didn't see any of this until putting on a headset and going and finding out. So there's a very large group called Educators in VR, and they run a very active community in hosting, like not only just hosting practical seminars and conversations about education, but supporting educators, helping people design systems, evaluating tools, having conversations, hosting. Um, so it's a nonprofit organization. It's quite good. And, and they're only one of many organizations that's developing training and formal education systems in VR. 
Um, they use alt space as a kind of an environment. And I'll talk about that as one of the options in a minute. Okay, and so this though was one of my Eureka moments. That it took me being in VR with a VR headset to realize that you don't need to be in VR with a VR headset. <laughs> it's so weird, right? But this was for me one of the Eureka moments that, and, and the first discovery is I'm attending these seminars under the ocean, listening to these creators talking about the application and use of VR for training and they're not in VR. They're, they're on a laptop. And I'm looking at around at the people attending and you can sort of tell by their body stance, if they're moving their hands, then, then they have, right? You, you can only move your hands in VR if you have a controller in your hand. And otherwise your hands are stuck at your side, they're glued still because you can't move them with your laptop. And, and so you look around the room and you realize that most of the people there are on a PC or a, or a flat screen device. So we're talking, right? We're, so we're in VR, but we're not really in VR. We're just using it as a medium. Um, and so that was kind of a little bit of a mind blowing kind of thought. And so that opens doors for me to go, well, then, <laughs> shit, if they can do it, so can, so can I, and so can my students. Because yes, there are some educators and I listened to them sort of talk about their experiences where they bought classroom kits, you know, suitcases full of headsets with multiple charging banks and stuff. So they'd open it up and every student gets a headset and super cool and wonderful and more power to them. But I don't think that Conestoga is going to buy us all class sets of headsets, just guessing, right? And so that doesn't work. But, but realize that it doesn't have to. You don't need a headset to take advantage of some of the positive aspects of this VR situation. Okay, so, so to me, what are the kind of the things that don't do make it work, even if you're in flat screen? The first for me is autonomy or choice. When you participate in a space like this, even on a PC, you have an opportunity to move. Like you, you physically move your character, the, the avatar or whatever it represents you in this physical space. And you, you make choices. You can move to the front of the room. You can move to the back of the room. Just as all of us would if we were attending this conference in person, some of us are comfortable sitting at the front. Some of us want to sit at the back. Some would want to sit with, sit with their friends or, I don't know, you know, the cute guy over there. And, and you just sort of, you pick your affiliation somehow. And, and, but that's natural. And we can't do it in Zoom, but you, but you can do it in one of these kinds of applications. So that's one. I think there's also this sort of sense of shared experience where, like I said, just as simple as looking over and nodding at somebody. And, and I've done that in these conferences where you, you're listening to somebody talk, but, but you just go, you wave, you go, hey. And just that little interaction, you make a connection with somebody. Uh, and then you're more comfortable talking if there's a breakout session or something. And, and you go, yeah, hey, so where are you from? Or, or wherever. And you can see how they represent themselves. You know, you, maybe you get a, a little bit of a sense of who they are or their style. And then I think, as many of us do, right, we understand that a lot of our learners are, are kinetic or kinesthetic learners. And, and this gives a little bit of a kinetic touch to things where you're, you're doing something, um, even if it's just looking around or just moving your hands or fidgeting. Um, but, but there's some physicality to this. Okay. I gotta learn to shut up every once in a while. So, I mean, what are your thoughts? Does this kind of resonate with anybody? Um, is this sort of making sense? Does it sound rational at least? <laughs> okay. Here's a funny thing. So I, another quick video that I recorded, this is a lecture hall that I visited in. So VR chat is very, very popular with the under, 
under 25 crowd, I'll say. There's some of us older participants, but for the most part, this is dominated by teenagers. You're supposed to be older than 13 to be in it, but there's a lot of under 13s. Um, but so teens and early 20s. So this is on a Sunday. And here's a lecture hall of all places. And head on a Sunday morning. And there's a whole bunch of people hanging out. And they're just, oh, my sound didn't work on this, but they're just hanging out and chatting. And um, uh, how many of our classrooms have students in them on Sunday? <laughs> how many of our students logging into your Zoom account early? <laughs> They'll open and hang out, right? It just doesn't happen. So this is the thing, like if you create a, a fun environment, they'll come to it, they'll, they'll appreciate it. It's a, it's a space, it's a meeting space. Um, okay, and I did read some commentary early in the COVID thing, there's one of the teaching and learning uh, teams, chat groups or forums, there was a comment that, you know, oh my, students can't put up with hours and hours in video or they can't spend all this time online. And I loved it because somebody included a, a, a link to a video from somebody who, who essentially might more politely than I'm gonna say it, called bullshit and said, no, our students have no problem spending hours online. In fact, you know what they're doing when they leave your Zoom session? They go online. <laughs> it's not the online component that's the problem. It's it's your lecture, right? it's your format, it's your content, it's your delivery. It's, it's the space that you're creating. That's the boring part. It, that's the part that they can't handle hours of. It's not the online piece. And that, okay, and that sort of struck home with me because I was one of the ones going, oh, my poor students can't spend hours on my Zoom call. Well, <laughs> it's because, <laughs> right? I, I was part of the problem and, and my setup and my scene. Um, okay, and and here again, they're they're on their laptops. Half of these, half of those people, like when I sort of went back and looked at the video, half of them they're just arms pinned to their sides. They're just sitting there with a laptop, but they dialed into this space just to hang out with their friends. So if you want to do this, this is and this is what I sort of opened with at the very beginning. I I can save you some effort. There's a lot of choices. There's a lot of ways that you can create these virtual spaces. Some are very, very difficult and some are relatively simple, um, but choices abound. And I've tried all of these and, and some others, um, and there's pros and cons to all of them. So I'll just say, I'm gonna make a broad brush and say there's a bunch of commercial packages. And on the positive side, they're professionally designed spaces. They're, they're beautiful, they're, they're gorgeous, the avatar characters are in some cases very highly customizable. There's a lot of, uh, there's extra interaction like whiteboards and so on. Um, and so that part of it is excellent. However, pretty common to see like 50 bucks, 60 bucks, 60 euros per person per month. Okay, and so for me, that's like ridiculous. Well, but if you're a company, Okay, but but if you're not a <laughs> if this if you're not making money doing this, you're not going to chomp out that coin. There's free versions, which I've experienced, but then you can only bring in about ten people maximum, so that kills it for our classes. And the sessions are limited to about thirty minutes. Okay, so really, commercial is kind of off the table. So there's free alternatives. Interactivity varies, quality varies. Most will accommodate though 25 participants or more, which is great. Um, totally accessible with flat screen devices, great. And for the most part, like not big screen, but alt space in VR chat, for example, you can, you can either use an existing space or create your own. And so you have that sort of ability. A big screen is mostly a sit and get like it's kind of like it's more like going to a comfy theater so you can talk with other people but it's about watching a video or a presentation. 
alt space is what the educators in VR seem to be committed to. It's good, but I do find it still limited to listen, talk, and move around. So it's really, it's just a meeting space. You just go there. And, and most of the seminars or sessions have been still sage on the stage, saying what they got to say, and attendees show up and sit in the... <laughs> We, we're out here with the fishes and, and they're out there with the special people. Um, okay. In terms of interactivity, VR chat, I show you that lecture hall, blows everything else out of the water. It is remarkable, the kind of interaction. And they've recently updated, they've released a new system called FizzBones and it allows even more interaction between people. So you could, we're getting to the point where you could literally shake hands with someone in virtual reality. You can push someone in virtual reality. You can like pick up and manipulate things, but, but VR chat, I think my, my limited experience is they are <laughs> leap years ahead and there's this huge community of developers. So it's, Remarkable. If you have children in VR chat, pay, at pay attention to what they're doing because a lot of it's very adult. And you can imagine what kind of interactivity <laughs> some, some people are doing. Um, okay, but that's way aside. It, the problem is developing worlds for VR chat is quite challenging. You, you need a program called Unity and it's I'll say it's difficult. Like there's a bit of a learning curve. Um, it's not friendly and so on. Huge environment though, large, large community of users. Not being used a lot professionally. Most of the applications are still kind of entertainment. So then Mozilla Hubs, this is, so I don't have it on the screen, but, but I'm gonna say, and you know, this is the one that I've settled on after a lot of different trials and building worlds for VR. I built worlds for alt space. I, I'm currently trying to build a word for, world for VR chat, but I think hubs is probably the way I would, well, it's the way I've gone and I like it, I, it works. So it has a bunch of advantages. First off, it's open source. Um, there's no software to download, which is great. All you use a bra is a browser. So it's just a tab in Chrome or Firefox or Explorer. Nothing gets downloaded, um, which is awesome. You don't even need to sign up. If you don't sign up, it'll just save a cookie on your browser to remember that you are you. Uh, so it's quite good. It's developed by um, Mozilla, who, if you know, is also the creator of Firefox. Like the Firefox browser is Mozilla. It's the same company, same organization. It adds some nice interactivity. You can bring new objects in using Sketchfab. And so when I'm done my little deck here, I, I'm gonna take you into my hub space and you'll see it for yourself, you can play. Um, there's something called spatial audio. So you can talk with one another, even when the lecture is going on. You can step away from the person speaking and they get quieter and you can talk and they won't hear you, which is really kind of a cool, cool thing. We'll, I'll, and I'll demonstrate that, you'll feel, see that. You can prepare the room ahead of time. So as a professor, I feel like I'm actually going to a classroom. I go up and I, I pin stuff up on the boards. I bring in things that I wanna demonstrate. And when I think it's all good, then I go have my coffee break and, and then come back with my students. I've prepped my room. I've physically prepped my room, which is really cool. Right? The room stays open. And I've, I have honestly, I've gone the, okay, I only did it once, but I went in to set up my room like a day before my class and one of my students was in and going around and looking at the information. And they said, I wanted to come in advance and check out what we were gonna do and sort of see, see what was coming up. It's like, <laughs> this is phenomenal, right? Nobody, nobody does that, you can't do it in Zoom and they wouldn't have, if they could, right? Um, but the room stays open once you've created it. So I'm also in the habit, once you set it up and, and go, 
if the student misses it, they can actually come back to the room. It's still there. And they can revisit it and have a look around and look at the notes or whatever we left. It's very open for hardware. You can use PC, Mac, Chromebooks even work, iPads, smartphones. So it's, it's quite accessible for people. It, the, Mozilla recommends no more than 25 people, but I've pushed it and I think going to 30 is fine. It's a little bit, if you make the, the room design fairly simplistic, you don't add a lot of memory load and so on to your room design, then I think it opens it up to, to a larger group. I've seen people on YouTube have left recordings of birthday parties they threw in hubs. They just created a space. They threw a birthday party. They had music all over the place and tons of people went and it was fine. Um, but you can create multiple instances of this same room or the same scene. So you could break your class in half and, and run two su current successions and just bounce between them, whatever. Okay. And I'll, I'll just touch on, and or maybe we can come back to this. Actually, you know what? I'll come back to this because I want to give us a chance to go and see it. So I want to take you into this space, but first I want to show you a little bit of interaction of my students using this space. So I haven't shown up yet. Like this is just before a class. And I've got three of my students who didn't realize that I already had the room being recorded. And they're just come out and say hello to each other okay. and have a conversation, which is amazing. Like, how cool is that? That's what I'm talking about is sort of building some community. Um, okay. And if you can hear the, if you can hear it quietly, I'm back at the entrance saying hello to other people who are just coming in, right? I'm greeting them at the door kind of thing. So, and, and then, and then I come up to the kind of the front, then I can, I can move around and say hello to individuals, but you face them. Yes, brother. Hello. You, you get in there, literally, you, you go to their avatar, you face them and you say hello. And they see your, and your head vibrates when you talk. It's really good. <laughs> so, so, so they can see that you're talking to them. Yes, sure. Raw material cost. Okay. Um, so then you're having your yeah, conversation, so you're doing whatever, you're doing your lecture, your can, lesson, can, your demonstration. That, right? Yeah. You can, uh, and keep track of it. And of course, the accounting and, department. And you can see, totally like, track of that. my students, are, they're moving around. They're fidgety. They're shuffling Labor around. Course. They're shifting. And so that's where there's some of this beautiful. kinetic okay, bit so going on. That one too. Now, it's hard to see in the video, and so I'll show you how to do it. the right. chat box. Just type and, and this is where I'm sort of explaining to them how you do it. You can see, you, hit the, um, you can do post-it notes. So like your students, if they have something to contribute, they can type it in, so that's beautiful. but instead of it showing up as a chat, it shows up as a post, like a post-it okay. note that what floats we, in space. Uh, let's scoot across and the you hall can move we'll it around delivery next. and leave it hanging there. So you can collect ideas like an idea wall or jigsaw puzzle exercise, however you want to do this, which is also kind of cool. So I have this pre-set like, up, right, with different, number of, talking about uh, metrics. Orders um, are completely fulfilled by the total number of orders received. Beautiful. Okay. So fulfill rate. Yeah. Do you want to add that? That's a great one. Right. And so they're, they're contributing, they're moving around, they're dialoguing. And the conversation I'm having here is yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Joel. more uh, accident rates or injury more rates. people saying more nice? things than yes totally in any of my classes ever uh, then uh sort of like uh, attendance rate or Sometimes even the in even the in-person class absolutely 100 absenteeism here do you want to add that one here okay here i'm going to pause for a moment uh nimish i see you got a hands up so you got a you got a comment or a thought um yes it's quite uh interesting now um maybe i missed out uh, the student does not need any other hardware than the laptop to create what you are showing us. Is that right? Right. Some of these students are here on a on their cell phones. So basically, you are using the present hardware which we are using for Zoom or Team. The same hardware is being used. Yeah. Um, yep. Whatever devices they have. So right. it's it's basically you are creating a physical classroom as if you are sitting in a physical classroom and lecturing instead of you know just uh, sitting in this one 
Yeah. Uh, how, how, how much time it took for you to, you know, create something like this one? Um, two Saturdays. Took me two Saturdays from scratch. And how, uh, uh, okay, so this is- oh, but, you Okay, but, but, I'm, but I'm a genius, you know, and I'm, I'm an yeah. expert at this stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> if, you, if, you, not, if you design not. this one for one, let's say one um, class, and then how much time, uh, time takes to, you know, make some changes and as, as we progress in the class? So what's or interesting that, is I've, so this is actually maybe about my fifth world that I've created or my fifth scene. Um, but now I, I ended up, I like this one and I, I use this for the entire term last term mm -hmm. for four classes. And I'm going to continue to use this exact scene this term as well. I like it. It's robust. It's not perfect. I could tweak it, but it's good. It, it's stable. It's not confusing. It works. How, and, how, how, is this whatever the creation you've done? Yeah. Is it easily transferable to others, or we can yep. copy paste, or uh, you know, do we have to you know start it in the you know from nope. the scratch? You you can have this. We we can start and, work. Yep, and you can have you can have this this afternoon and start working. You can meet in here tomorrow with your students, um, and I'll show you other. There's a whole bunch of other free worlds that are created that are available that you can also just pick and choose what whatever you'd like. So no, I, I like this world which you already created because there is a Ponestroga logo is there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. See, I know who pays. I know who pays my salary. <laughs> because you know, I if I go and get from the other world, you know, this Ponestroga won't be there. You know. Well, actually, and what's cool is you can take a publicly available world and then tweak it yourself. So you can add your Conestoga logo to the floor or change the color of the sky or do whatever. If you don't like wood, you like Chrome instead, change all the wood platforms to Chrome platforms. You can play and fiddle, like it becomes yours and you can yeah, do, whatever, the, do whatever you want. The, this one is a tested one, am I right? You already tested it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, exactly. Sure. So, yeah. So, you know, I have confidence that, you know, <laughs> Professor Nelson has done it. Yeah. Let's just, you know, the reason being, you know, if, if I have to start this kind of thing, this is a new thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I want to focus on my uh, right. teaching material, then creating this kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely. 100%. Yeah, that's smart, right? Let's some, let somebody else do this sort of development work and then you just, my, in the, uh, in the bottom, my old boss used to say, "Steal with pride." <laughs> yeah, in the no, in bottom we will give, give you the uh, you know that yes, this was created by Professor Nelson. Okay, whatever. My actually, my, my name's in it anyways, so you don't even have to do that. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. And the other, so let's see. Uh, well, I hope I can start over again. Let's see. What else I want to show? The other thing that I thought was kind of interesting is okay so class is over okay, let me explain <laughs> and, thank you for your time sir and yeah, i have two okay, students pleasure, hanging out pleasure, pleasure. after Good class me, and asking questions hey, Joel. and that doesn't happen I, I, in zoom I thought, either uh, i just want to ask two questions sir. Of like, course. Ask away, ask away. Uh, yes sir thank you the second one is that uh like i i showed these hubs uh, to my sister I yeah, was yeah, yeah. Uh, training and development manager in CSA. Nice. So okay. she was really excited about this thing, and she asked me whether she could connect you through LinkedIn or is there any tutorial video like uh, uh, teaching how to prepare this up channel? Yeah. She. So I thought that was pretty good testimonial, just to share that with you. That I had a student who thought it was so cool. He showed it to his sister, who's in business, thought it was so cool, and we've been dialoguing back and forth through LinkedIn to help her set it up and use that kind of stuff too. So I, the feedback I am getting from this is really positive. But my, the students like it. They have a hard time knowing why they like it, but they just do. And part of it is just different, right? And it's okay, it's, just, it's fun and it's different, so. Uh, let, can I ask you a few more questions? By all means. Okay. Um, the course which you are teaching, 
um, you are the only one who is teaching this course or are there are other professors teaching the same course? So there's other professors teaching the same course. And they are not using this hub and it is okay. Uh, so one other teacher was using it a little bit and the other is not. And I, I'm totally cool with that. I will say, so, okay, I, mean, I haven't explained or what I haven't said yet. Our format in, in the programs that I deliver, it's a, it's a two and one. So we tend to have two hours and one hour. And what I actually find is this hub space is not as good at Zoom as for sit and get, you know, where if you got a two hour lecture deck, a PowerPoint, and, that, and you got to get through 40 slides, this is not the best place to go. Zoom is better for that. It's a full screen, no interruptions, transcripts, right? So I, what I've been doing is my two hour lectures are in Zoom. And then my one hour session, what I've been trying to do, I mean, this is a whole other story. I felt I needed to support my students better. Like our, our success rate is yeah, not the best, right? And so I felt, I don't wanna deliver new material. I wanna reinforce the material in that one hour session. That's how I can differentiate the one hour to the two hour. So my two hours a lecture in Zoom and my one hour is a support session in hubs where we get together and talk and explore and experiment and run some trials and discuss. And, and I poke the same topic in a different way. Right? And that's where every professor does it differently. This was how I did it. Okay. Yeah, so this is an, a basically application part of your course, primarily. Uh, more or less, you know, it's a discussion application, you know, applying the knowledge which you gain in two hours. That's what you are doing. Basically. Yeah, kind of, right. It's more of an, ex now let's go and experience it. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Let's revisit it. So I called them my, this was my hubs support session. It's come to my support session. It's like my my tutorial or my TA session, you know, mm -hmm. that you do. So, yeah, good. I'm glad you're asking the questions, right? Because that gives me a chance to, we can talk about the stuff that I forgot to sort of, not that I forgot, but it's. Um, okay, so without further ado, I really want to get us there. Uh, in fact, I kind of hope to do that earlier. So I need to give you just one important pointer before we dive over to the hubs room is moving around <laughs> because students sometimes get stuck. It's like, I don't know how to move, here I am. So there's a couple different ways of doing it. First, if you have a touch screen, you can use your touch screen. Zoom moves you forward and backwards, pinch and zoom. Um, swipe moves you around. So if you're on a, you could use your cell phone and do that. Um, with a keyboard though, you can use your arrow keys to move forward, left, right, but you're facing one direction. So you're just sort of translating and, and moving front and backwards. Um, you can do the same thing with the, there's the classic gaming keyboard is the ASDW, is the same thing as your, as your arrow keys. If you look on your keyboard, it's sort of in that shape. Uh, ASDW is you know, left, right, front and back. And then they add the Q and the E for rotation. So the Q will rotate left 45 degrees, E will rotate right 45 degrees. If you prefer the, so what I tend to do is my finger on ASDW, because that's in a more convenient location for my left hand. And then for turning, I use the left mouse, I hold the left mouse button down and then move your mouse and that rotates you around, okay? So this is the first thing you have to do when you drop in a, into the room is move and sort of figure out that, okay? The screen you see in front of you, you'll see it again as you enter, my, enter this world. Um, okay, you can fly, but we'll get there. I mean, <laughs> the other thing I need to say is if you're, so Zoom and Teams, control your hardware so they can synchronize your microphone and your speaker so you don't have to have headphones in your zoom right 
but hubs is just a Chrome browser, so it can't control your hardware at all. So your microphone is live and your speaker is live. And so if you just use your open speaker and your open microphone, you will get feedback. So you need a you need headphones for this. Okay. If if you turn your let's see. Yeah, if you turn your micro if you turn your microphone on, you'll have to have headphones in or your speaker will feed back to your microphone. Okay. Um, I'm, I would honestly suggest that we exit out of Zoom because we'll just carry on our conversation there in, in hubs now. Uh, so I would quit out of Zoom, but you're also welcome just like mute your microphone so you don't get any sort of crosstalk over there. Um, and once you're in, you're moving and you can hear yourself. Um, well, you can't hear yourself. There's a sound check button when you get in, you can do the sound check. And you can also type anything into the chat box. And if you hit enter, you should hear a little pop sound. Actually, so I'll, I'll just show you. Um, okay, so you're gonna be, uh, I'm gonna give you the link and you'll get this window. So you wanna join the room because you don't have a VR device headset. So just join the room. You can, so I'm talking and it's clearly picking up my microphone. You can see the green bars and you can check the audio to hear it. And then when you're satisfied that it can hear you and you can hear, then you can enter the room. Okay, and the first thing you'll see is my little directions on A, D, S, W, rotate. And as I'm doing this, I can hear little clicks. So you, you should be able to hear it. Okay, and once you figure out how to move, you'll see that I have my sort of welcome sign and my ramp in. So the invite to get to it is nothing more than a link. So I'll put that in the chat box here. Okay, so just click on the link in the chat box and I'll see you over here. I'll keep an eye if you're having a problem, come on back to Zoom and, and we'll chat about it and try and get you working, but have a go, see if you can, see if you can get in. Hello. Hey there. So I'm not sure where my mic is going right now. I don't normally have Zoom and this on at the same time. Can you hear me in hubs? Yes, but it has an echo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's probably horrible. So let's see. What do I got to do over here? Oops, controls are up there. Testing. Test. Hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello, testing. 